Hello everyone, this isn't your average TI-84 plus CE. Gone are the poultry membrane buttons and plastic body. This calculator has a steel faceplate, cherry mechanical key switches, custom keycaps, and a backlight to top it all off. It's the TI-84 KE. After using it for a full year, I'm ready to tell you why the TI-84 KE is even a thing, how did I build it, and how do you get an even better one for yourself? The TI-84KE project was created by Noah Kaiser way back in November of 2020 as a way to combine the classic, sturdy feel of a desktop calculator with the modern graphing calculators we use today. It's essentially a kit to turn your calculator into a mechanical keyboard. He spent seven months of planning, designing, and learning brand new skills to develop the circuit board, hack the calculator, and print custom keycaps. He even pushed himself through a severe hand injury to print over 200 keycap fonts by hand. Noah's dedication meant the first TI-84KE kit was shipped in May of 2021. I got my unit a week later and immediately started building. The kit reuses most of the calculator's parts, so I'll have to fully disassemble it. I imported a TI-84 plus CET edition Python from the Netherlands because the TI-84 plus CE Python wasn't released in the US at the time and I was determined for this calculator to be better than any other TI-84 in the US. With the calculator all taken apart, I started popping all the key switches into the laser-cut steel faceplate. I decided on trying Cherry MX Clear switches, which are supposed to be tactile, yet quiet so I could still use this in a classroom. The circuit board supports the Cherry pinout and even allows north-facing backlighting. Manually installing the backlight LEDs into each key switch was extremely time-consuming, but there's no way I was leaving any features off this calculator. With the switches already, it was time to plug them into the PCB. I thought it would be easiest if I put the switches into the steel faceplate first, then put them into the PCB second. I even clipped the long backlight LED leads to try and make it easier, but I couldn't have been more mistaken. It was impossible to get all the leads lined up to slot into the PCB. I had essentially created a 200 pin lock which is something I dare say even the lockpicking lawyer would struggle with. After stubbornly trying to force it to fit, I eventually came to terms that this was just not going to work. Frustrated, I popped all the switches out and fit the PCB on correctly this time. The process was actually quite satisfying and the result looked fantastic. The switches wouldn't work as they were, so it was time to break out the soldering iron. Soldering all the switches to the PCB was the easiest part of the project. Everything went smoothly, and it only took half an hour to do 200 pins. With the keyboard itself put together, we need to hack the calculator to actually use it. This involves soldering wires to specific parts of the calculator's motherboard called test points. These are typically used for verifying that certain parts of the motherboard work, but in our case, we can hijack them to trick the calculator into using our new keyboard. I soldered the reset button first just to get a feel for how difficult it would be to add the wires. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad, so I screwed the motherboard into the 3D printed body. Then I tackled connecting the rest of the cables to the test points on the calculator. The wiring became a bit of a mess, but I thankfully left enough slack that there wasn't any sizing issues. Soon I was able to do the first big test. Would the calculator power on, or had I messed up a connection and was about to fry it? I have fried a calculator before doing other projects, and I was not keen to do it again. I double checked my connections, connected the display to the motherboard, and put in the battery. Lo and behold, it turned on the first try. The hardest parts of this project were done, and I could start the final assembly. I stuffed all the cables into the body and closed the faceplate. I installed the LCD and screen protector into the bezel, then clipped it on. The DSA profile keycaps are next, and boy do they look good. Like I said before, the print is handmade by Noah using dye sublimation. Just adding the keycaps, some rubber feet, and the battery meant the kit was fully assembled and ready for use. This is by far the coolest modification you can do to a TI-84 Plus CE. I've been using it almost daily for a year now, and it's been extremely reliable. I found it very useful as an external numpad for Excel documents and math homework, and you can even use it as a monitor. That's actually something you can do with any TI-84 Plus CE, but I'll explain that process in a future video and put up a card now when it's done. 
Battery life is identical with the backlight off, but cuts down heavily to a few hours when it's on. Having actual mechanical backlit switches feels even better than the standard keys. My switches are still quiet enough that, yes, I was actually able to use this in the classroom and even on some exams. So how much did I pay for all of this? The kit was $100, the key switches were $60, and the calculator was another $100, bringing the cost up to $260 total, not counting tax and shipping. It's an expensive project, no doubt, but it's in the same price range as a good mechanical keyboard, and this one doubles as a graphing calculator. I found the T84KE very useful, and I've absolutely enjoyed using it. If you'd like to get a kit yourself, Noah has been working on a T84KE version 2 with numerous upgrades to the version 1 kit that I have. You can either join Noah's Discord and grab the T84KE role, or visit his website at Kaiser Designs. The links for these will be in the description below. To name a few of the upgrades, the key switches are becoming hot swappable and individually addressable RGB. Another upgrade is hydro dipping this shell, which will look absolutely amazing. Remember, these are planned features, so they may change in the future. If you want to keep up with the design choices, remember to join Noah's Discord. If you have any questions about this project, please leave a comment below. Have a good day.